Actually, I've never interviewed a police commissioner <laughs> before, so I'm a little scared now. But Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you have a very interesting background. Yeah. You uh, are a chip engineer, if I'm not mistaken. Tell us about how you went from being a techie to, you know, the traffic chief of the city. Uh, uh, I'm an electronics engineer uh, by qualification. Um, got into VLSI design after um, engineering. I was studying in Delhi, uh, working in Delhi as well. So um, my father was an IPS officer. I always wanted to do this. So the shift was natural. Uh, wrote the exam and qualified. So, um, but it has helped. I mean, the qualification does help you to infuse technology. I think like every other field in the world, uh, even policing is not immune to the progress of technology and uh, the background has helped us uh, infuse uh, the latest cutting edge technologies into uh, policing. Right. Um, you know, a few days ago we were seeing some videos on your timeline right. and uh, the Bangalore police's timeline and we thought it was actually you, but you, it was your AI avatar which was, you know, giving updates on traffic and uh, uh, movement and so on. Yeah. Tell us a little about how you're using um, AI for all this. Yeah, so um, basically we wanted to use AI um, uh, to create these videos, these avatars which, uh, I mean, uh, speak just the way I do and look the way I do and uh, uh, we thought we can um, save some time um, as well as uh, leverage social media and create content in a format which is palatable or more attractive to the viewers uh, by way of instead of giving a draft press note if you can convert that text into a ai based video and with some content which is about 30 seconds i think that will send a better message across than just the plain uh, presser but what are the risks to that how are you ensuring that you know it's not misused an avatar of yours says something else which is not yeah. true. Yeah, so uh, there are a lot of uh, checks and balances. Uh, there are a lot of approvals that need to be given. The final cut which is done is obviously it takes our approval and only once we give our approval it is used. Like any new thing there will be um, uh, misuse of that. So we have to be uh, guarded against that and we are trying um, a lot of checks and balances in place to ensure that doesn't get misused. Right. So, in what other areas are you using AI? Because I remember my colleague, I think Kristin, had done a story some months ago yeah. on, um, you know, some Japanese technology that you're using for all the traffic signals in the city. How much has that helped? Because whoever came today from other cities still complained about uh, slow-moving traffic. I'm sure it's the number one complaint you get on a daily basis. But yeah. how many of these signals are AI-powered and, you know, how has it helped so far? Um, so, in terms of signaling, we have two kinds of AI systems at play. One is a quasi cost signaling, which is at right now at 72 junctions. By end of J February, it will be at about 165. And we have the Japanese moderato system at in about 28 junctions. By so, in a couple of months, we'll have about roughly about 200 junctions in uh, AI based signals. So, basically, the AI based signal does uh, what it does is like what any commonsensical thing would be. If uh, there's more vehicles at a particular arm of a junction, give it more preference, right? And if there's no vehicle there, then don't turn on the signal to green at all, right? So that's the basic funda behind this. Now, um, it has helped where these AI signals have been installed. Uh, anywhere between 17 to 22 percent is the reduction in travel times. And this we have monitored through third party. Uh, so we got a GPS installed on a car or multiple cars and had them travel along these lanes. So along these corridors, yes, it has helped. So, um, but you know, um, in 2013, the vehicle population of Bangalore is 56 lakhs. In 2023, is 1.2, 1.12 crore. We exactly doubled, doubled in 10 years. Yeah. Right? This year, we have added 12 lakhs in 10 months. I don't know what's it going to be at the end of December. So we have reached 1.24 crores. We have the largest number of private vehicles in India. We overtook Delhi. So um, if I am not, a, I mean, if the congestion doesn't get worse, I'll be very happy. Right? <laughs> we'll also be very <laughs> happy. But, but um, you know, with Bangalore's infrastructure, I mean, it has a long way to go. What role do you see AI playing in resolving traffic issues? Because it's a huge productivity killer it's the number one thing that you know founders talk about that uh, uh, employees talk about uh, well if you if you're talking about traffic pol 
police per se, I think uh, AI management, uh, traffic management will completely shift towards AI base in a couple of years. I think we are... Completely? Uh, yeah, yeah, shift. it is going to go. I think we are on that path now. I think it's irreversible. Uh, not only the traffic management, it's going to be congestion management, congestion monitoring, which we have already built into the this thing. It's just having those access to those latest technologies and uh, having those homegrown solutions to homegrown problems. Uh, I think we are there, I think, in terms of traffic management. But if you're talking about AI in general, I think I think level four, level five cars might come in shortly and uh, I think uh, driverless cars will help you use that much time of yours uh, doing something more productive. I mean, so. Right. Um, around 96%, I mean, this is a statistic I read, that 96% of traffic violations in Bangalore are being detected using AI-powered cameras. So what type of violations are monitored? How is this improved? So let's all be careful because there's always some, some camera watching you. Yeah, so um, uh, we started off with a project called ITMS where uh, at 50 junctions we had AI-based cameras which were detecting seven types of violations like no helmet, no seat belt, uh, using a mobile phone, not stopping at a red light. What's uh, the co most, most common type of violation? Not wearing a helmet, it's about 70%. Wow, yeah. okay. Um, so because of this, uh, the uh, enforcement due to AI or contactless enforcement became 96% and the physical enforcement reduced automatically uh, because uh, at one junction, uh, one AI camera is able to detect about say three to 4,000 chalans uh, violations as opposed to having 10 constables work in four shifts, they are also not able to catch or detect that many. But now we have gone to a system where all the 9,000 safe city cameras also are being used now. So we are building an AI platform at the back end which uses existing infrastructure and detects 19 types of violation, not just seven. So the beta testing is going on. Probably I think Jan 1st we'll be able to release that as well. So that will be at uh, initially at phase is 250 more junctions and probably we'll go to about 1,000 junctions in a year or so. Right. Um, also, you know, the traffic police uses multiple data sets, right? Yeah. I mean, you get data from Google Maps, cab aggregators, yeah. uh, delivery platforms, and so on for real-time congestion management. Um, how is this data used in other ways? Are there plans to perhaps open so I mean, open this up to the public? Oh, so we have a platform called Astram. Astram stands for Actionable Intelligence for Sustainable Traffic Management. It is a internal tool that we're using to monitor congestion real time by using all these multiple data sources. We have our own CCTV cameras, we are taking from map based services, from aggregators, from travel aggregators, school buses, all that is, is data is being fed and we are able to understand what is the congestion and we are able to do congestion prediction also. To the extent that couple of months back we started getting data from the case NMDC, the rainfall data. So we are able to predict where water logging will happen also in the next 24 hours. So that's where we are getting giving out advisories also regarding certain travel movements which might happen in the next 24 hours. Uh, shortly we'll be launching an app called Astram app also for citizens also um, which will help them plan or their routes for the next say 6 to 12 hours to 24 hours um, depending on how accurate data we are able to ingest right. Um, for example sometimes it, it says it's going to rain and doesn't rain and sometimes you are not even aware that it's going to rain and we have a terrible <laughs> downpour right. So it might help plan that travel, that's what we are hoping. It's not a replacement to all these Google, TomTom, Tom, uh, Maples, uh, we don't expect it to be. Uh, but certainly we are going to open up and um, one thing we are able to give is live road conditions which we are already sharing to these map based services, these aggregators like vehicle off-road, accident and other things. In real time we are able to share it to them. So their routing algorithms are already incorporating that and first giving advisories to those users as well as rerouting in certain places where road closures are required which is already happening. So that we can give it to the public in through this app. Right. Um, do you share learnings with uh, the traffic police in other cities? The fact that you know, you're, you've deployed tech in so many areas. Yeah. How is it different from what a Mumbai does? Pune I hear is also you know, very infamous for its traffic. Yeah. Delhi and so on. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm lucky because the Joint Commission of Traffic for Mumbai, Delhi and Chennai, all are my batchmates. Right. How did so, this happen? <laughs> that, that's tutors, an amazing uh, yeah. coincidence. So, so a lot of learning so and sharing happens. So you have a common WhatsApp group that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this is the road congested here, this is the road I think nobody talks on WhatsApp groups all these things, I think, <laughs> <laughs> more on professional basis. No, uh, it, it, we're just lucky, so we are able to share and we are able to get uh, the best practices in there as well. Right. 
Um, if I look at, you know, one incident that kind of put Bangalore traffic on the global map, it, it, it would have been the Trevor Noah concert that, um, the Trevor Noah show that did yeah. not happen, right? Yeah. Um, what were your own learnings from that? Because I'm sure you kind of faced maximum pressure in the aftermath of that. Yeah, that was a, like a perfect storm that day. I think we had um, a long weekend coming up, we had rainfall, we had six vehicles breaking down on the ORR and people stuck for hours together and uh, the learning was that one in Bangalore uh, monsoon management is a very very important thing for traffic I think um, otherwise if there's no rains there is congestion but vehicles move right even if they crawl but they move the problem is there's no gridlock as such so that day we faced a gridlock on the ORR so uh, which led to the development of Astram so we want to we monitor congestion to the extent that we monitor at the tech park level what is the vehicle at a particular instant in that particular tech park we are able to monitor today and take decisions based on if the vehicle go beyond a baseline what is going to be what is going to be if it's a long weekend coming up there'll be a huge outflow of uh, vehicles we're able to stagger buses like we are able to get data from uh, private bus aggregators we're able to stagger their timings stagger the pickup and drop-offs so we're able to do that now uh, so that was the learning from that but most important learning was it's a monsoon management thing what happens if a particular road is blocked otherwise uh, if a vehicle is off-road Till the vehicle gets off-road, we can divert, right? But what happens with monsoon uh, in Bangalore? All the roads get flooded, even your alternate roads. So there's nowhere we can send anybody. So AI doesn't help much there. But otherwise, the learnings has been, is been really good. So we are able to uh, monitor at a very micro level what is going to be the congestion for the next couple of hours. Right. Your background in engineering, has that kind of made you more determined in how to leverage tech? Um, in traffic management, does it have to do with your academic background, the fact that you are an engineer turned IPS officer? I don't think so. I think um, what happens is, um, uh, like any other field, uh, especially uh, policing, um, we, we'll be left behind if we don't adopt technology. I think anybody in my place would have adopted technology. Maybe I've adopted it faster because of my background, but it's inevitable. I think, uh, uh, like how... Um, motor cars replaced horse driven this thing I think AI is going to replace a lot of things uh, including the way we police and do traffic management have you ever been stuck in a traffic jam and where uh, since joining this <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course I mean it, it happens right? any junction Hebal. <laughs> <laughs> no, people say silver junction by the time it clears you know you can or create a f delivery app and also deliver groceries. Yeah, there is one uh, nice 10 minute movie on YouTube on Hebal. He starts uh, at uh, Silk Board. He starts from Silk Board. He uh, falls in love, marries and divorces also by the time he gets out of uh, Silk Board. They also have They've a child by the time they reach him. Yeah, but, the, uh, but I think it's Bangalore gets a very unfair and disproportionate uh, you know, backlash for the traffic. I think it's been um, unfair, I feel. We are not that bad, right? We can, we can do far better, uh, no doubt about it. I think all of us are working hard towards that. But I think it's very unfair that Bangalore gets such kind of backlash. Right. Uh, final couple of minutes, sir. Yeah. Uh, which is the busiest day of the week in Bangalore and why? Wednesday. Uh, don't ask me why, I don't know. I mean, uh, if, we, if we monitor travel times, uh, congestion lengths, these are the two parameters to monitor how, how, how congested a city is. Or Is it because people generally work from office on Wednesday, right? I think it's, I think they so. chill on Monday, chill on Friday, go. I think business as usual is on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, you, you get Friday to Monday off. So generally the thing that we can rush on a Monday morning, I think it's, it's uh, uh, totally, I mean, uh, disproved in Bangalore City. I think, with, and I, uh, for some particular reason, Wednesday is, it's very high. Um, uh, to the extent that uh, I would say it, it, it is the uh, at between 6.30 to 7.30 in the evening. I think we have the maximum congestion on uh, Wednesday. Right. One or two trick, uh, ticks, uh, tricks or tips that you would like to give us towards the end to avoid being stuck in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Use uh, public uh, transport. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm a, uh, see, uh, I'm a Bangalorean born and brought up here, um, been here 40 years and it's been an honor to serve in Bangalore but the point is if we want a nice livable resilient city uh, we need to adopt public transport otherwise it's not going to work out.
see, it's, I mean, no amount of AI, no amount of infrastructure, no amount of widening of roads, no amount of additional roads is going to help unless we adopt public transport in our daily lives. Yeah. Great. Yeah. On that note, thank you very much. Please give it up for the police commissioner. Thank you. Traffic of Bangalore. Thank you, sir.